tonight on the news at 10. I know the kind of cop I am, and I know the way I police, and I know that I do everything the correct way the way I'm supposed to. We told you about two agencies next door to each other, navigating through a cop shortage. Nampa is down about 9% of its force. We're at a concern level. I wouldn't say we're at a crisis level. With officers working unlimited overtime. A response to a non-priority call may be a lot slower than people expect. Meridian has less people applying too, but only one opening. We have seen a reduction in the number of applicants across the board in all things. However, the ones that we do get are good. Both departments are working to rise above the crisis as law enforcement agencies all over Idaho are coping with a cop shortage. In this day and age, fewer people meet the strict hiring standards to become a cop. Around the country, departments are changing their standards so they can get more applicants. But law enforcement leaders say changing and lowering certain standards can be a double-edged sword and lead to more problems in the profession. They don't think that will resolve the cop shortage. However, other potential solutions do exist. When our citizens call 911, they have an expectation of service. They don't know the inner operations and where we're at staffing levels. They don't know just how, how short we're running or what. They don't know that, that daily operations, right? All they know is that when they call 911 and they need somebody there, the expectation is somebody's coming. If things continue the way they are, that might be the day where we just don't have anybody to send to that incident. Part of that, we're going to maybe have to take it over the phone. When you're not going to see an officer face to face. If this place doesn't exist, then where do these people go? They're back out on the streets. They're committing crimes, they're back reoffending, doing the things they were doing that, that's brought them here to begin with. This should be the focus of, of every, really every politician. What, what are we going to do to solve this problem? Calls are going to go higher, the response times are going to go lower. What does that mean for Idahoans' quality of life? I think it goes down. I, I see that already. Some law enforcement agencies in the U.S. offer hiring bonuses to new officers, including IDOC, to try to fill their ranks. Several agencies, like Canyon County, offer current employees pay incentives. This past year, the Canyon County Sheriff's Office got county commissioners to pass a 10% mid-year raise for detention staff. But multiple sheriffs I interviewed for this series say it's not enough. What's it going to take to keep our qualified personnel working right here? What kind of salary base is it going to take to recruit good, qualified candidates into our agency? That's what we need to focus on. It's a laser, laser focus. And if we're not doing that, we're going to continue to be the training ground, which we've been for years. We invest the taxpayers' money into hiring them, training them, putting them into years and years of expensive training and knowledge to see them walk out the door and we start over again. That's, that's stupid business. I was writing this story as cities and counties were passing their budgets for the next fiscal year, which starts in October. And we saw cost of living increases and pay bumps for government employees really across the board. But it's not just on the backs of city and county leaders. Sheriffs also call on the governor and legislators to pump more state money into this problem. For counties specifically, they'd like to see a local sales option tax passed and counties given more freedom with property tax revenue. Nine Robert one four code four. Did pay make a difference? Yes, it did. Uh, it's I tell people pay isn't everything, but it does help. If you can be competitive in pay and have a good benefits package, um, and you're comparable to those surrounding you, then applicants start to look at other things, right? They're not just hyper focused on pay or this. They start to look at fit. Our wages are good. We can make a good living, um, and I, and the city. They do listen to us. You know, we can give them our list of our needs versus our wants, and they're going to try to fill our needs um, for us. Take a look online, and you'll see agencies creating more engaging recruiting messages. Recruiters and law enforcement leaders stress the importance of having a positive, inviting, healthy culture where people are given opportunities. We provide the best working environment. It's still a job, but we provide the best environment that we can for somebody to come here. We're constantly making sure and checking the pulse that we're not losing sight of what's important. Um, and you have to hang on to that. You can't lose sight of what's important. There's more to this job than just being a cop. Caldwell's new police chief says they have a staffing crisis. Ultimately, it's up to it, it's the community that gets affected by this.
So I'm looking at deployment, at, at changing our, our, our structure of how we deploy officers to really maximize our economy of forces and change the way that we operate internally to maximize our, our effectiveness with the community. When he took over this summer, I went around the station and I removed um, take care of us and then take and then address the evil. Chief Rex Ingram made a push to improve culture. And I left take care of the community. And hire more diverse staff. We owe it to the community to really give them a voice. To better represent those they protect and serve and to build trust. We have a 36 uh, percent Hispanic population in the city of Caldwell, but yet our workforce doesn't uh, mirror that community. And one of the ways that we reduce crime uh, in law enforcement is when we mirror the community and we basically uh, hire from the community and we are the community. Uh, I went on uh, La Grande radio station last week and spoke to the Hispanic community on the radio and really hopefully reaffirmed to them that they can trust us, that we want them to be part of our department. Recruiters also stress the importance of proactive community policing and building relationships. They say school resource officers, youth academies, and events with the community help bridge the gap. Research shows solid training in conflict resolution and de-escalation skills helps improve community policing and, in turn, public attitudes and recruitment. When you actually sit down and talk to an officer who's in uniform, uh, past, present, or wanting to become that, then you get to understand the job. We grew up not liking law enforcement but here I am today. What are the solutions that you see at a county level and a, and a local city police agency? But I think part of it is community involvement. I mean, people need to, you need to be transparent about who you are as a police department. I, th I think that's important that you start people out young. And I get it, it's not as cool as it used to be to, you know, to want to be a police officer. Law enforcement officers feel Idahoans and elected officials overwhelmingly support them. We have so much community support, it's amazing making the career more appealing here. The community is actually like putting like signs up in the front of the department saying that we support you or thank you or dropping off cookies and cupcakes and everything for us. That support from the community, an investment in community policing, and a commitment to fair pay could not only help agencies cope with the cop shortage, but potentially help resolve it. It's been tough to be a police officer in this country. And we recognize that and we have to make them understand that despite what you hear and read, this is still an amazing job um, to do if you're truly, if your heart lies in it. Um, has it changed? Sure. Is there a lot of expected of police officers? Sure. That's okay. That's okay. We need to hold ourselves accountable and, and make sure we're doing our job the way it should be done. I reached out to the governor's office to see if Little plans to spend state money to help fix this problem. His press secretary, Madison Hardy, says Governor Little recognizes these problems and is committed to working with the legislature and local governments next session to invest in public safety. Hardy says Little increased financial support for local governments this year, directed millions to help with local public safety salaries in 2020, and took steps to increase wages and support for Idaho State Police. She added, quote, this year's record investments in transportation, water, and education are covering the costs of local projects, leaving cities and counties with more money to address growing needs like public safety. All right, if you missed any part of this 7 Investigate series, you can watch any and all of the pieces on our website, ktvb.com, and on our YouTube page.